All right, well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mr. Hen, and uh, we're a little bit early here. It's about 8.26 Eastern Standard Time. And um, we've got my drawing paper already here. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Random Quick Draw is a game with four categories, 12 options in each category, uh, character, action, object, and setting. We roll dice uh, to see what character, what action, what object, and what setting we're going to be drawing. So uh, I'm going to start documenting these a little bit better, but for now you can see I believe we did five episodes for season one, which was last year. Uh, and now we're kicking it up with a little bit different format. Uh, last year, we're, our format was I would have a guest on, and we shot on location at a place in Greensboro, and it was really good. Uh, however, there were some challenges with scheduling and getting people there. There were definitely challenges with equipment, functionality, and different things. And so I'm going to start a little uh, uh, more simple now. So I want to do this in a way that I can be consistent with it, um, and so I'm going to shoot uh, from my place, and we're going to do this hopefully once a week. I'm shooting for Tuesdays at about 8.30, and uh, we'll see if anybody is interested in it. Now, what I'd really love is if you uh, enjoy this, obviously you like it, um, share it with your friends or whatever, uh, especially artist friends. So if you have an interest in drawing along with me, that would be really cool and you I, each time I put one of these up I will have it on my website uh, as a coloring page that can be printed out because uh, I'm just going to do this in black and white I'm not going to color it here tonight uh, but you can submit yours online there and I will I can add it to the gallery They'll, I'll put an online gallery for each one of the episodes that we do so if that interests you please feel free to draw this you can take as much time as you want the initial concept was we were going to take 30 or 40 minutes to draw, and it was a lot of pressure. It was a lot of fun. Two people going at it. Um, again, you can watch those episodes, but uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw for about an hour, um, and I'm not going to color it. I think that will produce a better drawing, hopefully a little bit better entertainment, and it also will give folks an opportunity if they want to color the one that I draw tonight, they can do that. Um, so... Hopefully that's a good idea, but we'll see. We'll try it a few times and see if there's any um, feedback, whether it's positive or negative. So if you like or if you don't like, please feel free to comment. Um, any thoughts, what can make it better? Now, my setup here is not my future setup. This setup is kind of what I'm working with now based on the equipment that I have. I'm actually using a document camera for this, and I can already tell I'm not a huge fan of the autofocus, and I cannot turn it off. So... Um, things may get fuzzy and then clear again and fuzzy and clear again. So uh, the camera that I'm using to shoot this portion will probably at some point change. Um, the one that's actually shooting my face is one that I've had for years and years and years. I feel very comfortable with its functionality, but there are probably better options out there now because it's over 10 years old. Um, so eventually I'll upgrade. Uh, but for now, this is what we're working with. And uh, hopefully it's good enough at least to get started and get an idea uh, rolling. So, uh, truth be told, I was setting everything up last night to get it all worked out, and I rolled the dice last night, and I actually drew um, several little tiny drawings. Uh, I spent about 30 minutes drawing uh, a little bit just to test all the cameras and everything, and I'm just going to go ahead and roll with that because <clears throat> the options seem pretty cool, pretty fun, pretty entertaining. And um, so, truth be told, I'm not going totally from scratch. I have had a couple of little... Uh, drawings to sort of think through uh, the idea. That said, I have not put a lot of thought into this. Um, I'm pretty much kind of just going with it um, and more so in the future. So again, if you're just joining us, welcome. I'm Josh Hendry, uh, also known as Mr. Hen. I'm an art teacher, K-8 through art teacher, uh, and some of my students call me Mr. Hen for short, some call me Mr. H, some just call me Mr. Hendry. Uh, but I kind of like the name Mr. Hen, and so um, I stuck with that. So here we go. If you saw the Twitter announcement of the episode tonight, you'll know that our character tonight is a magician. And the action is directing traffic.
And if you would like to have the list uh, for the different items that you can roll dice for on your own, uh, you can join our email uh, club and then I will just, that will be a free download for you to be able to use. Uh, the object we have is a vase of flowers. And our setting is a carnival. All right. So let's see, I'm going to get a sharper pencil here. All right, let's get kicking. A magician directing traffic. There's a vase of flowers and a carnival. And I just want to say that you can do, you can interpret this in a lot of different ways. It's an illustration exercise, so you can kind of mix and match, but setting obviously there's got to be carnival elements to it. But the vase of flower can be, vase of flowers can be incorporated in any kind of creative way that you could think of. Um, and directing traffic, it could be foot traffic, it could be traffic outside the carnival, it could be maybe you're directing a bunch of, a herd of elephants, it, it whatever would kind of come to mind and you think would be a cool thing to draw. So, I don't know why, but my first thought is to draw a magician with a top hat, and I'm just going to draw a circle for the head to start with, and at first this is probably not going to show up on screen too well, so I'll try to get some darker values in there as soon as I'm happy uh, with portions of this so that it will show up a little bit better and eventually it will get a lot easier to see. Um, I have no idea what kind of hair uh, I want my magician to have. I was thinking big kind of uh, chops uh, for sideburns and I'm not sure why I'm going with round ears. Uh, I have no reasoning behind that. Um, let's get that hair to kind of look like it's sitting in the brim of the hat. The brim of the hat is tilting back a little bit, so I think that the lip should be a little bit deeper like that. Maybe I'll put a little bit of a curl in here. So the curl makes me think he might be a little bit of a shysty magician, maybe. I don't know if that's what this guy's personality is going to end up being or not. Um, now he's directing traffic, so he's going to have to be looking in a direction. Let's go ahead and make him, I think I'm going to make him looking over here. For some reason that's feeling like the route to go. Maybe. Um, is he happy as he's doing it? Is he mysterious? Is he sly? I don't know. Kind of depends. If he's a magician, he's doing some kind of trick while he's doing this. I'm not sure why. He's almost looking leprechaunish right now. I don't know if I like that nose or not. It's a little, pig, a little bit piggish. If I give him a longer chin, it will look a little bit less piggish and look a little more. I don't know. I kind of like that. Do I want to give him a beard of any sort? Do I want to give him a little goatee? I don't know if I like that or not. I'm not sure. I kind of like the bare chin, to be honest. Maybe we'll stick with the bare chin for a while. I can always add a goatee in later if I like it or if I want to, if I think he needs it. It's a good thing to remember for future drawings. I don't have to rush into the beard, man. Don't have to. Yeah, I kind of like that little smirky, gremlin-y look he's got going there. All right, so, well, if he's directing traffic... And he's got a vase of flowers. And he's a magician. Let's go ahead and give this guy a bow tie. Nothing says magician like bow tie. There we go. All right. All right. Oh, Boston's coming in. <laughs> Boston's leaving. <laughs> Boston is uh, our Boston Terrier. Oh, my love. <laughs> my baby's here. She's going to be working in the background. You might see her. She might duck her head in and say hello. All right. What to do with this feller's arm? He is directing traffic. I want his wrist and hand to kind of... 
come out to the side a little bit because he's going to be holding a sign if he's directing traffic. It's going to be a stop sign, I think, if that makes sense, if you're directing traffic. Octagons are, can be quite challenging to get all even the angles and everything. Uh, there may be an easy way to do this, but I am just going at it, shooting by the look of it. Maybe it'll end up looking balanced and even, hopefully. All right, so I know stop has four letters, so right down the middle, the O and the P will be on one side, and the S and the T will be on the other side, so... Uh, my thought process there is divide the space in half so I don't run out of any space and I can kind of plan it out accordingly. Now the S and the T are a little bit harder than the O and the P as far as spacing. So I want to make sure I don't make my T too big up at the top or I'll run out of room for my S. So yeah, S's are pretty, can be pretty challenging. Yep, that's what I thought. I got my S a little bit skinny for my T. Might be able to push that T over to the middle a little bit more. Because the O has the rounded portion that kind of gets away and gives you a little more space there for the top. You can push it in a little bit more and be okay. So we'll do that. Push that T over a little bit. All right, I'll come back and fix this S up a little bit. All right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Don't want to spend too long on that. All right, my man. There we go. There we go, right there. All right. Stan Prokopenko, if you're ever watching this, you will see every single weakness in my understanding of human anatomy. <laughs> uh, I watched that fella and I am amazed. Alright, let's see. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's give this guy some cool jacket there. Some sporty, spiffy magician jacket. Alright, so that's not very magic. Uh, it's just a stop sign. That's pretty ordinary. How about if that stop sign is a vase of flowers? No, because he's going to be holding the flowers. That would not make sense. Okay, so we got a vase of flowers here. All right, so he's gonna be holding out his hand, and I'm guessing a good magic trick is to make something levitate. I don't know why he's gonna be making a vase of flowers levitate yet, though. I have no idea. So let's go ahead and put this vase of flowers in there and see if we can come up with a reason why it should be levitating. Just going very simple flowers here.
we go. Stan again. I'm thinking Stan Prokopenko. How would he do it? I'm going to do a slice of bread for his hand. There we go. Thumb. Something like that, maybe. Probably not. That looks crazy bad. Oh, well. All right, that's going to have to do. All right. Does this look magical with this? Zooming around there, are those little magic sparkles floating around? <laughs> All right, Mr. Man. This line right here reminded me to put some pleats in the pants because that just makes it look so much more fancy. All right. Oh, look at that. His feet are going to go all the way out of frame. No problem. Now, of course, he needs a cape because he's a magician. Duh. This cape going over his shoulders. Okay. Now, he's in a carnival, so it's going to be a Ferris wheel back here. I don't know what style of Ferris wheel this is. I'm sure there are lots of different styles of Ferris wheels. I remember that in order to load into a Ferris wheel, though, the buckets get almost all the way down to the platform. So I think I gotta keep that in mind. All right, so I gotta use the circle that comes down here. Oof. circle maybe that I don't know oh, well. there. 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 Oops. there okay there there Babe, how you doing back there? Hi. How you doing back doing there? Doing good. Doing all right? Mm -hmm. Awesome. How are you doing? Doing well. Good. Let's say hey to our friends on YouTube. Cool. <laughs> Hello, friends on YouTube. Oh, there you are. Hey. hey. Back there. Ooh, hello. Let me see if I can focus on you. Whoa. Hello. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Hopefully that's in focus there now. Let's see, what else goes on at the corner? Well, we got some tents up usually.
Hmm. How do we know he's directing traffic? Okay, we got one of these funny signs here. It has arrows pointing every which way. Maybe that would work. For some reason, I'm thinking there's going to be a coin balance sign here. Button candy. Uh, Ferris wheel. To make a Ferris wheel is F E R. R I S. Is that right, babe? Ferris wheel? Yes. Awesome. Woo Ferris wheel. What else? What's another? Slingshot? Isn't that a ride at the carnival? Slingshot. Um. What's the uh, what's the merry-go-round thing called? What is that thing called? The horses that you get the little plastic mm -hmm. horses. What is that called? Um, um, Not the merry-go-round. Oh my god! Thank you. Golly, my brain wasn't working. There we go. Do a carousel. So what else? Is that a carnival, babe? Funnel cakes? Mm -hmm. Funnel. Turkey legs. Cakes. Oh yeah, turkey legs. Turkey legs. All right. Groovy, groovy. It's looking pretty cool, I think. <clears throat> there any small, medium-sized objects I can put in here to balance this out? It feels very heavy on this side. Hmm. What is a carnival-esque item that would be with a magician? Do you have a suitcase, maybe, on a stand? I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put an old suitcase on a stand here. Maybe that'll bring the lines. Hopefully, we'll bring the attention to him. We'll put it on a stand. 
a little folding stand. Let's see. Should I make it open? Maybe I should make it open so people can see something inside. I'm blocking part of the Ferris wheel and part of what I've already drawn. It's all right, cool. I love these. I don't know if they were meant for drawing, but I use them all the time. It's an office supply item, but it makes a really handy dandy eraser. And I prefer the white erasers to the pink erasers because they don't leave marks. By the way, you can also download these sheets that I'm drawing on. I actually, um, this is a heavier cardstock and illustration board uh, by Strathmore, but I ran it through my printer, and the PDF is there to download. <coughs> Excuse me. Still getting over a little bit of a cold. Now, I don't know if you're thinking what I'm thinking, but there's got to be a bunny rabbit in here. Bunny rabbit at all?
We'll bring that. There we go. Alright. This little bunny rabbit's gonna be chomping on the cat while his man there is directing traffic. going to be doing. Oh, near my chair. Crack. Can't stand the legs on this thing. a little bit better. That Ferris wheel is fighting with that bunny rabbit. <sighs> Not a big fan of the Ferris wheel fighting with the bunny rabbit. Been going for quite some time now. I don't like how blank that is. I just need to put something there that 
it looks so blank and open. Maybe if we put a couple of more apothecary jars in here, that would help out. Starting to overwork that area a little bit, so we need to get on with it. Okay, that Ferris wheel was not balancing well in there. It was kind of fighting with this little guy right here. That's no, not what we want. Maybe that's better. I don't know. No, these two lines are fighting. <laughs> Not a lot of fighting going on here. Maybe I can get away with doing that very light and almost disappearing. But I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it's time to throw some ink on this puppy. Uh, we'll start with a Sharpie for all the words. This uh, Sharpie is beat up. Hmm. Let's try this guy. That's a little more pointy. Now, the challenge with Sharpie is to keep the space in between the letters. Because Sharpies have a little bit of bleed to them. And especially if you're going from skinny pencil lines to Sharpie, you kind of have to push the letters this way and that to keep them spaced out well. And I didn't do a great job with the W and the H. You can see how easy it is to run your letters together if you don't have any space between them.
So at this point, I have to let go of some of the things that I don't like and just keep moving, like the cotton candy arrow. I'm not a fan of that difference between how tall that is and how short that is. So, but it's important to keep moving and not delay and not to dwell on the things that don't look perfectly right because the goal is actually to communicate. <coughs> Excuse me. Is actually to communicate the idea more than to make it look perfect. If this is going to be some really polished, finished work of art, I could take the time to do it. But we're just sketching out ideas, trying to develop um, our drawing skill, trying to think creatively while drawing, trying to make decisions uh, quickly on the fly, and be creative and loose and have a good time. So I think I might be almost done with the Sharpie. I like to use the Sharpie around the things in the foreground just to make them a little bit more prominent. Make them stand out a little bit more. Whoa, that was a wicked line right there. <clears throat> and then things that are engineered like the signs or things that are out of kind of materials that are machined so to speak I'm more likely to use a more mechanical uh, instrument like a sharpie uh, than I would be a brush pen now for the clothes and all the little details and things like that uh, much more likely to use uh, my brush pen for those so um, let's see that's a three so we're going to change the line weight here as we move into uh, Oh, I think my drawing board is touching my tripod and making it shake there. Uh, as we move in on the details, we're going to use a thin, and this is a three uh, ink pen. I do a little bit of cleanup work as I go, so if I don't completely like the way a, a shape turned out, I'll do a little tiny editing as I trace around it to pull the shape the direction I want it to be. Um, and it's just kind of one final little design edit that I make in process as I go. Um, nothing major. I'm sticking to the lines I like. Uh, but if I notice that something's a little off and I can adjust it with my pen as I go around, I will. Now, I'm not really happy how that O turned out at all, but that's okay. All right, now we're getting into what I think is the fun stuff. <clears throat> and I get to use my brush pen. So this is a really enjoyable tool to use. They're kind of expensive. I think they're like 16 to $20 or something. And you can get the ink replacements for it. But um, it's got a really enjoyable brush nib and I know most people who draw with inks are very familiar with this particular pen and there are probably better ones out there but it's the best one that I've found so far that is in a partially kind of reasonable uh, price range so We better kick it up. We're getting pretty close to time here. I didn't want to go over an hour, so we're at about 45 minutes now. So And it takes, for me, it took a while to get um, accustomed to this pen, and I still don't feel like I'm really proficient at it. I feel like I know a little bit better how it's going to per behave but I don't yet know how to draw with it um, and what I mean by that is I don't know how to get exactly what I'm looking for out of it exactly when I want it to do something so I know that I need to 
pull away to get a thinner line, but my hand being left-handed doesn't always go to the right so well. So I haven't learned any of those tricks that would help me accomplish um, particularly lines no matter where I want to put them. So like if they're on one side of the drawing and my the direction of my hand accommodates it, I can get a lot nicer line weight. And then if it happens on the other side of the drawing, I'm sort of at a loss for how to capture that line weight that I like so much. So um, that's what I mean by I haven't really learned how to draw with it yet. I kind of know what it can do and I love what it can do, um, but I just don't feel proficient at it yet. And I haven't learned enough tricks. Like I couldn't teach anybody how to use this pen yet. So I know going across there, I knew that was going to be a battle to keep it a thin line. And I don't like how chunky it looks. Um, so, and a lot of times I would rotate my page. I, I'm not going to do that here because we're set up on camera, but that is one hack that I know works. If I rotate the page, I can get a really clean, thin line uh, because it's in my wheelhouse of where I feel very comfortable and precise moving the pen. Um, but that's just not going to happen on camera. Uh, because I think it's more important to keep it all uh, squared away with the camera. So, still got a long way to go to learn how to use this thing, but I really do like the potential it has. And I've seen people use them to such a such a beautiful, um, with beautiful technique and get fabulous results. And so, I look forward to those days when I start to unlock its capabilities a little bit more. <laughs> but a lot of doing art is letting go of sort of the expectation and being willing to just learn. Let that be your expectation. I'm going to learn something. Because it rarely turns out exactly the way you have it envisioned. Um, but if I can learn something to use next time, maybe I'll be more successful on the next go round. So just making the most of the opportunities. You know? I have learned one thing with this pen is that if you work a little bit faster, you get more elegant lines. So it just looks a lot better. Uh, to be careful also because I'm a lefty and it's easy to drag my hand through what I've already drawn so if you're a lefty you know what that's like it's also tough filming because it, you tend to block up block off what you've already drawn from the viewer and uh, I haven't learned a technique to to help with that yet either I don't know if there is an, a technique if you know of one that in the comments below I would love to know and I don't like the direction of that thumb but I haven't drawn it correctly in pencil so since I've already moved on to ink so I'll probably just live with the fact that it's not the way I want it to be because if I try to change it in inks and I'm wrong I run the risk of making it look even worse uh, but one thing I might do is I might just kind of dummy it down a little bit like that maybe it passes for <laughs> some kind of thumb all right. Now, the trick here, and again, I want to rotate this so badly. The 
trick here with these magic lines is to keep the pen barely gliding across the page so that the lines stay nice and thin. Ooh. Yeah, not completely happy with it yet, but. Still got a lot to learn. Alright, so there's the vase and the flowers. Give it a couple more little magic dust particles floating around. Make it look a little more magical, hopefully, in here. Maybe. Alright. Alright, now the background. Got my bunny rabbit over here. I gotta put some details over here in the suitcase. In the bunny rabbit. Can't forget the sidekick.
There you go. There's a magician directing traffic with a vase of flowers at a carnival. Wow, we're right at an hour. I am going to erase all of my pencil lines and then I'll be done. Uh, this will be up on the website as a coloring sheet if you would like to do that. Uh, download it and print it at home and color it. You can do that. Uh, if you would like to draw your own interpretation of this, uh, you can go to the website and you can upload your artwork there. And we'll put it in the gallery for everyone to see. Uh, and uh, if you would like the printout for uh, the options, the 12 different options for the character, action, object, and setting, uh, we have a new list that I just produced uh, this month. And if you'd like to sign up for our email list, uh, you can download that for free as well. So uh, thank you so much, guys, for joining. And hope you really enjoyed this. And until, you, until I see you again, keep drawing.